Hello, this is Mr. George, Super Magnet Man back once again to talk a little bit more about magnets. This time we're going to be talking about how to separate and how to put back together some very large magnets, ultimately large magnets. I'm going to start with the small ones, but this is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get from people that have bought magnets on the internet. Is they write me and they say, these things are so powerful, they're amazing, but I've broken half of them already. Well, that's what we're trying to avoid. If you get a chance to watch this video before you start trying to work with the magnets, maybe we can save you some money and help you have a better experience. To start with, I'm just going to show you the little magnets first. When we start with little magnets like these little 6 millimeter by 2 millimeter magnets, all that you want to do is remember to shear them apart. We can simply shear them with a lot less force than trying to pull them apart. Everybody's instinct from their old days in school is to just try and pull apart because the old ceramic magnets, you could pull really big ones apart by hand. But with the Neos, it's hard to do, especially with some of these smaller ones. So you just want to line things up so that you get a thumbnail next to it and slide it off. That will let you shear them off. Now, we're going to take a look at some that's a little bit more powerful. These are large thin magnets. One of the problems with the large thin magnets is they're extremely brittle. They will break with the least amount of effort. So we want to make sure you know how to separate these correctly. And the force again to shear it is much less than the force required to pull it apart. I can take this stack of 14 millimeter by one millimeter magnets, put a thumbnail on it and start to slide it off. Now I kind of know what to expect. So I am holding on to it pretty tightly. I'm going to show you what you need to do is you can line this up. Once you get it started moving, this is where it's trickiest because what will happen a lot of times is just as you start to relax because now it's getting a little easier, the magnet will flip back on the stack and break, which is what we don't want to happen. So what you want to do is as soon as you start shearing, you want to go all the way through and make sure you grip it as soon as it comes through, put both fingers on it and move it out of the way. Get it several inches away so that it doesn't accidentally fly back up on the stack. If you start trying to push and you don't catch it as it's coming off, what will happen is this magnet will flip back on top and slam onto it and break it in half every time. Now, the other thing comes back to how do you put these back on? Let's say you're through with them or you need to put one back on the stack. If you want to make sure that you break, 100% of them, you just get it close and turn loose. When they slam together, these thin ones are going to break every time. These are about as fragile as potato chips sometimes. So what you want to do if you really want it back on the stack without breaking it is come in from the side. When you start to feel it tug, you sort of pinch a little harder. Soon as the magnet touches the stack, then you can let go and it slides right back into place like it needs to be without doing any damage to the magnets. Now, another thing that we can do is sometimes, if depending on the thickness and the strength of these, you may want to use a door face. Just use this piece of wood here and picture this as a door face. If we use this as a door face, all we want to do is line the magnets up so that a little bit is hanging off the edge of the door. Now we can take a thumbnail and push and just slide them right off. They just shear right off. A door face works really well until you get past a certain size. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we're just covering the small ones. Next, I'm fixing to move into the bigger ones and then ultimately some really huge magnets. Taking a look at a little bit larger magnet, these are my 30 millimeter square by about four millimeter thick magnets. And they are incredibly difficult. If you try to put two thumbnails in between here, it would be very difficult. Even if you try twisting it a little bit, it's very hard. It'll always keep rotating back into position. The easiest way to get these is to put two thumbs on top and your fingers underneath and then slide them apart. One of the problems again that you'll have is due to how fragile these magnets are, if I let them slam together, there's a good chance when they're this big, it's probably only a 50-50 chance that they would break. So again, if you, if you want to put these back together and make sure that you don't break them, you want to get close, let them touch, then turn loose, and there you have it. Now you've put them back together. Let's review. Once again, to get them apart, I put my thumb, each thumb on the top. I put my index finger underneath the bottom one, if I've just got two of them, and slide. They slide apart. I let one hand, thumb, and forefinger grab this one, one grab this one, and I pull them quickly apart. If you do this, you can separate them every time without breaking any. 
Now we're going to take a look at some larger magnets. Let's get to some of those that's really tough to separate. Our next sample is a very large motor generator magnet that I have. This is the M5033s. These are about an inch and a quarter long and they're about a half inch wide, but they're only a sixteenth of an inch thick and they're curved. Now each one of these, if you bought them in a set, would have different polarity on the inside so it works for motors and generators. Very large ones. Now, getting these off is very, very difficult because they're past the point of you being able to slide them apart comfortably with fingernail pressure. They're almost too hard to push apart with your thumb. If you had a bunch of them to do, you would not want to do that. Now, we're going to take a little piece of wood. I'm just using my wedge here, but you can take a little piece of wood holding the stack and you start to slide. Now, once you get them broke to where it starts, I don't mean breaking them, I mean once you get the, the fix held where it gets about this far apart, it becomes very easy to push. This is when you are the most susceptible to breaking them is because you think it's easier, relax. And when you do, they're going to slide back on top of each other and break. So what you want to do is get used to or accustomed to lining them up, pushing completely off of the stack. And again, if you need to return it to the stack later, all that you need to do is get it close, let it make contact, slide back into position. So let's review again. Now you could do this if you had a door facing and line it up next to a door face. For me it works out easier to using it just holding these in my hand, lining this up with the edge, and then push. As soon as I see it start coming off, I want to put a finger on it so I hold it and keep it from slamming back on top of the stack of magnets. Okay, and then put it back on, slide back into place. Taking a look at a little bit larger one, and I'm taking a worst case scenario. Many times magnets like this come with spacers in between them, which make them a lot easier to separate. But in this case, these do not have any, any way of separating them or with a spacer. They came in a stack like this. Now, once you've done this a while, you get pretty good at being able to just use your finger and push this off, like I'm doing here. I just slide this one off, once again lengthwise where it's got the least amount of force on it, and I push it all the way through until I have it off and quickly separate them. As we start to look at some of the larger magnets, I'm going to be wearing large leather welding gloves. You can find these very inexpensively, $10, $11 a pair, something like that, at a local welding supply. I get the very thick leather kind that's got a good soft lining on the inside. Now. I use these to help minimize the damage to my fingers in the event that I have an accident. I can't assume that I'm never going to have an accident, so I want to fix things so that I have the least problem if I do have an accident. So as we take a look at these larger magnets, once again I can hold them in my hand like this and if you're strong enough and your fingers are strong enough and you don't have to do a lot of them, I can simply shear these apart, pull it away, and now I've separated them just by pushing them away. Lengthwise, you won't be able to do this if you try pushing them sideways, push lengthwise and it'll come right off. Now when you come back to putting them back on the stack, once again pinch down very tightly, come in from a side angle till it makes contact, tilt it up and it slides back onto the stack. If you have a wooden table available, this works very well. If you'll take a look at this, I use a piece of wood. Now if I had a lot of these to separate, I would do it this way, put it on a wooden table, take this block of wood to put on top to keep from hurting my fingers. I'm going to move away just so you can see the setup. I've got the wooden block here, the magnet, and just a little bit hanging off. Put this on, go straight down, and now I've got this. You do not quickly release and let it slam back on the magnets. You want to easily ease it back on there. Now, also, the same technique works for putting them back together. I would use the wedge, line it up like this, put this magnet on top, slide the wedge out. That puts them back together. So that handles this size. Let's go even larger.